So where are we going to go or where, where may we go in the future to, to develop better diagnostic tools for ME? At the moment, um, a number of different possibilities exist. So we've done some work with MRI imaging, developing new sequences that we hope will be sensitive to inflammation within the brain. Currently, this work is extremely early. However, we have used a couple of different sequences that we think may be sensitive to inflammation within the brain. Also, the, the work uh, from, from Japan suggesting that PET may be used to identify inflammation in the brains of patients with, with ME, I think is very interesting and work that needs to be developed. But essentially what this has shown is that PET imaging that is sensitive to the activation of microglia, these brain immune cells, um, may be a sensitive tool in diagnosing patients with ME. At the moment, this data has only been acquired in nine patients, but if future studies suggest a consistent signal, then this could be quite a powerful technique to aid in the diagnosis of patients with ME. So what, what, what is MRI? Uh, MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging, and it's a, a technique for imaging um, the human body. Um, and uh, in particular, we use it for, for imaging the human brain. Now, MRI is incredibly powerful. It's not just one type of image. One can image all sorts of different physiological changes within the brain. So for example, one can use it to look at differences in anatomy, difference in the size of different brain regions. One can also use it to look at differences in the chemistry of the brain. So something called MR spectroscopy can look at changes in different brain chemicals. It can also be used, for example, to look at differences in blood flow um, and a huge range of other parameters, temperature, um, pH within the brain. So it's a very diverse technology for, for investigating brain structure and also brain function. And now fMRI is, a, is again, is a, it's, it's an MR technique that looks specifically at function within the brain. So how is it that the brain responds to different challenges? And it measures actually slight differences in blood flow that occur when a brain region becomes activated and can produce these activation maps that we can use to look at how the brain function changes from one condition to another. So SPECT scans and PET scans use uh, radioactive traces to, to look at the function of different um, parts of the brain. So for example, one needs to inject a patient with a tracer and then look at how that tracer, uh, it's a radioactive tracer, and look at how that uh, tracer decays over the course of time. And what one can do with these scans is tag different chemicals with these radioactive tracers and then look at all sorts of different um, functions within the brain. So for example, look at particular receptors for things like serotonin or dopamine. One can also use them for looking at microglial function. So there are certain chemicals or drugs that can be used in PET scans that we know bind to microglia when they become activated, but, when, but not when they're in a resting state. So PET and SPECT are again very, very useful tools for looking at um, a diversity of brain function. So I think uh, PET imaging and PET imaging of microglia could be a very hopeful technology to look at inflammation within the brain. Um, the, the, the problems with this technology are though it's very expensive, it involves radiation and is quite challenging to work with. So a number of groups, including my own, are looking to see whether we can develop MRI techniques to, to identify inflammation within the brain. Um, at the moment, some of the data is quite hopeful. We've published some data to suggest that some types of MR imaging are sensitive to brain inflammation. However, I would caution that this work is very much ongoing 
um, and needs to be further uh, developed over, over the next few years. This is a very interesting question. What's happening with research in ME? And, and I think my answer to this is very much yes. I think, I think the, the developments that I've seen um, in, in research funding within the UK and the number of groups that are getting involved in investigating the physiology in ME, I think um, are very good signs that uh, we should be hopeful of breakthroughs in ME research in the coming years. So for example, the work again, as I've talked about before, of Andrew Lloyd in Australia, I think really is very, very interesting looking at how um, previously healthy individuals respond to acute inf infections and how that changes their behavior even after this infection apparently has, uh, has, has resolved. So I think this and a number of other groups work around the world looking at ME, I would be very hopeful that uh, over coming years there could be a, a number of uh, very useful and insightful breakthroughs into, into the basis of ME.